Hello, everybody. Justin Stivers. Thank you guys for tuning in for another episode of the Stivers Show. Very excited uh, for my guest today, James Miskell. Miskell, my apologies. Uh, Estate Planning Law Group of, of Georgia. So, um, James, we, we pseudo met through a mutual connection. Molly McGrath, I'm sure she'll, she'll tune in and I'll let her know that, that uh, we put this together. But um, Fantastic. James is a state planning probate attorney in, uh, in, in Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia area. And um, I'm very excited to have him, him on the show today. He's doing a lot of stuff uh, virtually and I think has really, you know, as much as anybody can adapt to a, a global pandemic. It's not something we, we plan for, but I think is, uh, you know, doing a great job at, at that and kind of pivoting and, um, and, and doing a lot of his service that was, you know, in person, which obviously is a lot harder to do right now, but now doing it, you know, virtually. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And I think he's doing a lot of, you know, great, great marketing stuff. I want to also talk about the website, uh, let's talk estateplanning.com, which is a very cool domain. <laughs> and, uh, and I was saying earlier, um, I don't think I've ever been to any website, lawyer or non-lawyer that has more content blog posting on there. So I think that's, that's awesome. But, um, so anyways, we'll, we'll dive right in, but you know, where I always like to start is, uh, you know, who are you and, uh, what do you do? Sounds good. Thanks. So, uh, yeah, please call me Jim, Jim Miskell, sure. uh, state planning law group of Georgia, uh, been, uh, uh, estate planning specialist for, uh, some time. We became the estate planning law group of Georgia in 2012 or 13. For me, lawyer, most people come to your office because they're miserable about something. Why else would you go see a lawyer? You know, uh, I don't go to the dentist unless my tooth hurts. Um, and they're usually miserable about a situation that they've had a large hand in creating. My estate planning clients I found to be a contrast to that because they came to see me because they love their family and they were trying to avoid a situation in the future where they or their family members were miserable. And uh, it just became really clear to me that that was the right path for me. So that was, I guess, 2005 or six, and uh, just took a long, careful road to becoming uh, specialized in only estate planning and, and probate. And a little bit different than you, Justin, you, you, you prefer the probate side. We'll do the probate side, but we prefer the planning. Um, just a little bit uh, different. Uh, flavor on it, but it's been a great, um, a gratifying practice area because every family's different. It's always a different problem to solve. Um, and uh, again, people are happy when they come to see me instead of miserable. So they are good. All right, that's good. Mine yeah. is really not happy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You get the you get the flip side of the coin. Not not necessarily always happy, but at least pleasant and and talking about their kids. You know. So, yeah. Do you, do you find that, so with, with everything going on, you know, I feel like estate planning, in my experience, it's kind of been people are afraid of the inevitable, right? Like we all kind of know we have a finite amount of time. Um, and so that maybe is one part of it. Um, right. And they, you know, there's legacy. They want to plan for their legacy. They want to maybe have a son-in-law they hate and they want to make sure the son-in-law doesn't get anything. You know, a bunch of different- a fair few of those. I, I would imagine. <laughs> um, <laughs> But with with, um, with with COVID and everything, I think obviously it's it made things a lot more real for a lot more people. Yeah. Did do, do you sense that in, in your practice? Has that been, I don't know if it's been an uptick or, or are people concerned about it or it's just kind of business as usual. We always know there's something. It's fun. You know, it, it's interesting. I'm not sure. It, it may have made uh, a greater relief between the ends of the schedule, uh, between the ends of the spectrum. Generally, I think, yeah, people went, oh, this is one, this is really bringing into relief that uh, we have a finite amount of time. Um, one of the great tasks in estate planning is find out, a, figuring a way to talk about that without it becoming so heavy, you know. I mean, you can say, I saw another study last week and it continues, mortality rate in Georgia is 100%. And there's just no way around it. You know, you just try and say things and get people to, yeah. to come alive a little bit. I've got stories where we've had somebody that has done the educational component, initial consultation, and said, that's great. We know what we want to do. But, you know, I've got open heart surgery scheduled next month. 
let's do this right after that. <laughs> so yeah. I've got those clients. I've got some of those clients now. I'm uh, scheduling a meeting this week with a family, they've got some outdated wills before their first child was born. They've got five kids, two of which are in college. He's like, well, can we wait until it's really said we can all do a big in-person meeting? I'm like, yeah, we can wait, let's not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so some folks have really taken it and become more motivated. Some uh, still a little more standoffish. We've We've addressed, the meeting around uh, the the virus pandemic by going virtual. You know, we're doing every meeting we've done since early March has been a FaceTime or a Zoom or sometimes a, a phone conference line. Those have worked pretty well. It's better to have a face-to-face. -face. Video certainly makes it a, a more personal meeting, but I have been somewhat surprised really at how effective I feel like they've been and how we've still been able to make connections with our clients. For uh, signings, Georgia has really, and I know a lot of states, a little different from state to state, but generally, Georgia has eased up on in-person signature requirements on real estate transactions and things like that. And they made some provisions around um, estate planning, executing wills that improve somewhat, but are still pretty onerous for most of our clients. Yeah. You can do in per, you can do uh, video signings of wills in Georgia as long as all the witnesses are on, all your uh, and your uh, testator test tricks are on, um, witness the signatures. But the, one of the hitches with that is that then you've got to have those documents couriered to the attorney the same day. Mm -hmm. um, or there are some other ways to do it, but yeah. it's the other piece of getting the physical documents all in the same place the same day is a, more difficult for us than what we've been doing, which is auto signings. <laughs> some people, some of our clients say, we're doing a drive-by signing. Well, no, not exactly. We're doing a drive-through signing. So you come to, <laughs> come to the parking lot. We've done a lot of clients. I, I know there are some firms in, in Georgia they are doing on the front porch of their practice. You know, they've got a nice front porch with rocking chairs. Yeah. Sitting outside with distance. We're having folks come in their car, crack their window, my staff's great. They put together clipboards with everything flagged. We do a document review ahead of time yeah. remotely on Zoom. And so then it's signature pages in line of sight and um, hearing of the witnesses and the testator. Um, and then all the documents, clipboards go into what we call the quarantine box. And we get them out a week later to do the scanning and the notarizing and, and the things that need to be done. It's a little bit different process. I think most of our clients sort of get a kick out of it. Um, but uh, that's one of the ways we've adapted. I, I think whether it's perfect or not, I've gotten the impression that our clients are appreciative that we've thought about it, mm -hmm. that there's some, you know, that we come out in masks. It's funny. Yeah. Um, it may be a warm day. I've got shorts on. It's, um, <laughs> it sort of makes up for that lack of in-person in the room time that we may have before we get there. Um, so it, some of the things have surprised me. But overall, I've been real, real pleased by the way we've been able to, to address the, the needs. Well, I would say um, Georgia is a little more, la so I, uh, a couple, I feel like four weeks ago, three weeks ago, we rented a house in uh, Hilton Head with my family in South Carolina, and we drove there. And in Florida, it's very shut down. As soon as we got into Georgia, no one's wearing a mask anywhere. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> between there and South Carolina, and then when we got back into Florida, uh, they had, you know, basically at the border, they're like, you have to go through a drive-by to say, you know, what state you're coming. Very stupid system because you could just say wherever. But they're like, where are you right. coming from? And I'm like, South Carolina. I'm like, okay, pass through, you know. So, anyways. Yeah, it was right. interesting. It was interesting. But, well, do you think, you know, I think, I know a lot of firms are, are doing those, that type of, well, not a lot, but some firms are doing that type of, you know, the, the drive-through signings or, or, you know, virtual meetings and all of that. Do you, do you think that's the, the, the way it, things are going to go long-term? Uh, one of the um, issues for some of our clients we got maybe dual professionals. They have a hard time getting physically in the same place. This has made us much more practiced at being able to address those needs. 
for our firm, it's not going away. We will mix in. I'm a big handshake. I love it when the ladies hug my neck when we finish a meeting. I think all that stuff's great. I miss that stuff, and it's a connection with the clients. We'll we'll have some in-person meetings starting. When I don't know, but um, the Zooms have been so productive, so uh, effective, or video conference, whether it's Zoom or WebEx, whatever. Um, that I, I think it's going to be a part of it. I don't think we'll ever go back to all in-person meetings. It raises our efficiency level um, a great deal, I think. And, yeah, 100%. Um, you know, and I've got a, I'm happen to be at the office now. If I were at home, I've got a setup that looks almost the same. So, you know, uh, that, that makes it a, a easy for me to sort of uh, offer the same kind of service if I just feel like, have an extra co a cup of coffee at home in the morning. So, um, no, I, I think we'll see a mix of it. Uh, part of me has really enjoyed it. Um, uh, one of the things is we have multiple office locations. Well, two, um, not anymore. I've got to, wherever the web is, I'm, uh, we're, I'm okay. I'm not driving back and forth from off. I don't spend one day here and one day there as much. Um, yeah. So, uh, but I think it's uh, people who are reticent to use the, the technology have gotten used to it. Even I see with clients, you know, our, our clients ra range uh, in age, the older clients may be a little less technical, technology, technologically comfortable, even by the second or third meeting, they're, they're getting it, yeah. you know? And so I, I, I think things are just going this way. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people are realizing that it's not as as difficult as they maybe thought it would be, and that a lot of people I think kind of thought that their clients would put up some sort of resistance from it. And I think this was a they might have before had they not been thrust into it and forced into it. But now I think that they're seeing, oh wait, I don't have to go in and see you if I don't want to. You know, it's just a lot easier for for a lot of a lot of people. I do want to touch real quick. You know, just. Um, on the on the workshops that you're you're doing so um, you know I know well I guess I don't know but I'm assuming for you you know an estate planning attorney you know in-person workshops have always been probably a, a large draw for bringing in potential new clients um, kind of same work hand in hand with like financial advisors and doing you know yeah lunch and that sort of stuff um, but I know we were talking a little bit before you know offline that you've shifted that to more webinar some live some recorded and i just you know kind of wanted to you know get you to speak on that a little bit in your experience with that and and success pros and cons i guess in some ways um the pandemic has accelerated and facilitated a direction we were trying to go anyway uh we've always talked about not always the last two two and a half years we've talked about we wouldn't it be great to have a webinar um version of the workshop and that's our, our model is start with the educational workshop uh, prior to the initial consultation for most clients. It does a couple things for us and folks that have this sort of model that I don't want to belabor it too much. Uh, but initial consultations very often can be your area of practice 101. Here, let me orient the client to what we do. The educational workshop gets the, all that taken care of. It also allows you to present some issues and options to clients that as a couple or individuals before the initial consultation, they percolate on. And by the time you sit down, I, I think the workshop buys back 40 minutes of a, of a 75 minute meeting back to my client where we're talking about the family instead of me going, well, okay, here's the basics of a will versus a trust and those yeah. sorts of things. And I, so uh, it's, advantageous in in several ways um so sometimes it's marketing more often it's the first piece of our enrollment process um with the workshops on the web it's a little bit more toward the marketing side um because we don't have the exposure or they're not necessarily referral clients it's more like a retail retail ad client um, and most of our push to the um website we circulate our blog and all the all the marketing and newsletters that we do directly we also have a company that does facebook direct directed ads for us focused uh, ads for us that drives most of our traffic to that um, we've got two versions of it one is an evergreen 
and another is alive. And the reason we're doing both is because we just sort of have the feeling that there are some clients that aren't really excited or familiar about an on-demand kind of thing. And also like the idea of it's Wednesday at three, I better be there. I'm clearing my schedule. I've made it a priority. Yeah. That's part of their buy-in, you know? So, uh, we're, and we're honestly, we're testing. So this is two and a half, three months in, we're trying to see the numbers. What, what our conversions like look like evergreen versus, um, uh, live events. Um, I've gotten advice both ways. Oh, don't try and do, don't do this one, do this one. Don't do this one, do this one. We're, we're going to sort of see, maybe by August we'll make a decision. Um, maybe not. Maybe we'll just yeah. keep doing a little bit of both. Well, I think, you know, I mean, just, I, I don't, I do a lot of presentations um, in, in different capacities, um, which are generally, you know, pretty efficient. And, um, you know, there's usually a lot of people there or generally, you know, fair, fair turnout. Um, and I'm not opposed to going back to doing that. You know, one of the things I don't think I'm going back to is I used to do a lot of, you know, kind of meeting with potential referral sources and that sort of thing, lunches and coffees, you know, happy hours, whatever. Right. I, think, I think I'm done with that. I honestly think I, you know, just it's one, I knew it wasn't efficient because as you know, you're meeting with one person for that one hour meeting and then you're you know, the 30 minutes to get there, the 30 minutes to get back, you know, all of that stuff. Um, but, but I think it's, you know, with this, it's changed. I mean, you can be very efficient. If you need to, if you want to meet with somebody, you can do it in Zoom. Definitely there's no substitution for, for substitute for uh, in person. You know, I, I'm the same way. I like to, you know, shake your hand, talk with you and whatnot. But I don't know. I also like that I can not be running around town, driving back and forth Miami, you know, to get somewhere and I can be in my office and be much more efficient. So. No, amen. And in, in Atlanta traffic, similar uh, sorts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> similar situation. And you know, I, people refer business to folks who like them. Yeah. And I get that, but I like people who do a killer job for my clients and I don't have to worry about it. I'm not losing sleep naturally we're going to like each other personally or not but what if i'm not really crazy about a referral source of politics or their hobbies or whatever it doesn't affect whether i send to them so that i really appreciate what you said about efficiency is it sort of like going on all these blind dates and it's not really the point yeah. i mean i you know what what i'm looking for to like somebody is that it enhances my credibility when I refer a client. Yeah. You know, that they nail it, they get it. Um, and they look at clients the same way as I do, you know, so it's important to figure that out. But uh, do, do you, do you find, uh, you know, and, and not to talk bad on competitors, but do you find like maybe a lot of your, actually, I like talking bad on competitors, <laughs> but do you, find, do you find that, you know, they're all terrible. They're all terrible. They're all the, we're, the, we're the only good ones. And I can say yeah, that right. in Georgia and I'm in Florida. So, uh, <laughs> uh, do you find that a lot of you know competition is is not as maybe I don't even know if I would call it forward thinking at this point. It's just kind of like if you want to do business, this is how you have to to do it. But you were probably a little forward thinking before all of this and everything. Do do you? I mean, with your colleagues in Georgia, do you find people are kind of like? stuck in the mud just waiting for things to go back to where they were i think they're sort of um there's probably more of a spectrum of this but there's kind of two camps i think there are probably still some attorneys that are curled up under their desk yeah thinking oh my gosh what do we do <laughs> um you know and uh i think they're the other attorneys that get on i've been very impressed with some of the efforts of I'm not going to say who I like, yeah. them, but, but no, there are some firms that are really on the ball in Atlanta who are, are marketing well and um, working COVID into what they're doing. And uh, it looks like they've really stepped up their game. They didn't really miss a step. And uh, I'm trying to, trying to use those folks as uh, motivators to keep up with them. So, you know, there are a lot of folks doing a really good job. There are some folks that I haven't heard or seen as much from. Uh, yeah. Who are still who are waiting for things to get back open um and uh yeah i got a a, a marketing uh anybody who runs a law firm or a small business you know you get these these advertisements from marketers all the time these inquiries and uh 
touting how they, what they could do for you in the virus and how they'd helped people pivot. And uh, they sent me a thing, their thing says, my client that we helped last week says, I, uh, I feel sorry for my, for my competitors next month. And I read that and I thought, next month? How about now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so there's sort of either. It's an odd message. <laughs> yeah, it, I thought it was weird. But you know, it's either curl up on your desk and wait for something to happen yeah. or uh, work, work the problem, you know? Yeah. So. Well, to that, and to, I know we're run up our time, you know, I always kind of like to, um, you know, leave, leave some advice or something for, for other you know, professionals, other attorneys, other business owners out there. Um, any, any advice, it can be you know, marketing, whatever, whatever, whatever advice you have, maybe advice you wish you would have known, either related to COVID or, or in general. Any, any, any knowledge you'd like to, to part with? If, uh... <laughs> or no, or if not, no. That's a, <laughs> no it's a dangerous question, because yeah. I'm an attorney, I could go out and talk about running up on time. Yeah. Uh, I could, I could go on a long time. No, it's not to get frustrated with, uh, with anything you're doing. If you hit a roadblock in process, if you hit a roadblock in marketing, um, it, to try and take it in stride. Remember that you got as far as you have by working the problem. Uh, and uh, you thought this thing was going to be the one. And, you know, we, we were talking a little bit. And I don't mean to pick on marketers, but marketers are always the silver bullet. We're going to do it for you. Once you hire us, you're not going to worry about revenue or clients anymore. None of them are. None of them are. Uh, and the first couple, you said, you get your feelings hurt. You're like, well, why didn't that work? Yeah. Well, you know, so um, I would say this is, it sounds a little trite, but I think it's true. Hang in there. You know, you got to and keep working yeah try try different stuff not everything is going to work and uh you know it's, it's not going to work as well as you want it to work either so right yeah and some things might surprise you and they work great yeah. and so you know yeah well very cool well yeah. well jim i appreciate your time man and um, i like i said i let's talk estate planning.com i would encourage everyone to just take a look at the website anywhere else people you know you want to point people to, to get in contact with you or, or learn more? Website's a great place to start. Uh, if you have any questions, you can get me through the website or Jim at let's talk estate planning.com. It's a, it's a long URL, but it's English. That's great. So, you know, that's no, good. Um, and uh, you can find some video content there and uh, uh, sign up for the blog if you want the newsletter and all that good stuff. Awesome. Man. Well, appreciate it, Jim. Glad to hear you guys are, are doing well. Thank you again for, for being on. Thank you, Justin. I appreciate you. I appreciate the show. Thank you, sir. Talk to you guys soon. Bye. Take care.